Greetings, film fans. Lieutenant Fish back to bring the pain with another review. I had considered a horror theme this year, but the channel is still young. I'll probably aim for a themed month next Halloween. For the moment, this week, let's look at an alternate history steampunk horror detective thriller from New Zealand. Does the final product measure up to more than the sum of its parts? We'll see. centuries we brothers have served mankind and them us the great union let the blood be one and the two races join as a perfect creature welcome to the world little brother do you have any comments on the dead no well they're saying it was a brother Have you thought about what would happen if they found out we were covering up these deaths? Which is why you must find him, Silas. The Brotherhood have requested to be part of the investigation. No brother has ever taken a human life. Please! We must refuse to let one aberrant individual destroy the balance between the two races. I am only being what I was meant to be. The police were want her, don't you? You're just like me. He's become infected. Now he carries this thing out into the world. Can you imagine what will happen if he infects others? I will be the bait. <laughs> it's what he wants. No! These are hard things that we do. But you must think of the greater good and of your own future. I will make the world a very different place. You could be forgiven for thinking that the breakout faux documentary film What We Do in the Shadows is the first vampire flick to come out of New Zealand. It's not as though Perfect Creature got a theatrical release in the U.S. From IMDb, it appears to have gone directly to DVD stateside two weeks after its festival premiere, which was a full three months before its theatrical run back in New Zealand, eight years or so before What We Do in the Shadows came out. Maybe not the best release strategy, but I can't speak to the overall financials. As an aside, what we do in the shadows is an excellent vampire flick, but very different from this picture. Perfect Creature was written and directed by Glenn Standring and stars several notable faces, including Dugray Scott as Brother Silas, Saffron Burroughs as Detective Inspector Lily, and Leo Gregory as Brother Edgar. In an alternate history, steampunk-designed world, creatures bearing similar characteristics to vampires, named Brothers, were inadvertently created by alchemists during a fictional period of early genetic engineering. The same tinkering created a rolling series of plagues and bacterial infections that were responsible for the deaths of hundreds of millions of people. These plagues have in turn been addressed in part through the ongoing researches of the brothers, due in part to their long lives and focused senses in developing newer vaccines and treatments. There is a distinct symbiotic partnership as the brothers operate with the blessing of the church obvious with the terminology used in the previously considered sacraments of the blood of life. Not only do church communicants make physical donations, but they also receive gifts from time to time for health reasons, etc., in the form of transfusions. However, there are a number of ways in which the brothers do not match their traditional vampire tropes. While they do have their traditional fangs, blood drinking, heightened senses, strength, and longevity, they don't really bear any of the expected weaknesses. Sunlight doesn't hurt them, and silver doesn't appear to be necessary to kill them either and a cross certainly has no effect. Whatever kills a man is likely to kill them as long as you can hit them with their enhanced reflexes. They're also born naturally as a rare genetic accident more similar to the mutants and X-Men than anything else. And the gift or curse, depending on your point of view, of vampirism cannot be passed through their bite either. When our story opens, Brother Edgar has been tracked by Brother Silas who locates him just as he has finished draining a victim, much like a scene from Jack the Ripper or Jekyll and Hyde. 
It turns out that in the course of his vaccine research, Brother Edgar has become infected with a new strain of plague that has given him an unquenchable thirst for human blood and the drive to spread this new plague at the same time. Brother Silas must now team up with the human authorities on behalf of the Brotherhood in order to track down Brother Edgar and stop him for good, partnering with Detective Lieutenant Lilly. From the beginning, the title Perfect Creature is a definite misnomer. The only time it comes into play is at the very end of the film. More likely, it started out playing a larger element early in the film's development, but by the time the script was finalized, there was no real consideration given to adjusting it. And so it's not really the best indicator of the tone of the film. The big draw for this film, though, for me at any rate, is the fantastic alternate history steampunk world the creators came up with. Supposedly about the same time period as the present, we have mixed tones of Victorian and Edwardian elements, looking at the fashions, slums, workhouses, and social conditions, in addition to more modern cars, weapons, computers, and airships. The budget is clearly limited, and a few of the wider shots look a little too artificial, but you've got to give them points for trying. This is an insanely ambitious flick, and they really go all in for building the atmosphere. And most impressively, there are many street-level urban shots in daylight. No excessive arbitrary darkness or night scenes with heavy rain or drizzles and fog, as many similar films have resorted to using. Filmmakers here use real dressed locations, and you get a very real, used, lived-in feel for the entire world, from the police station to the Brotherhood facilities and the various characters' apartments in the slums. Although technically set in the holy city of the Brotherhood, Jamestown, Pacific Colony, a veritable metropolis that even serves as the seat of the Queen, presumably the Queen of the British Empire, it is nice to see a fully realized steampunk megalopolis that isn't New York, LA, Tokyo, or London. Bonus points awarded here as well. So the world building is solid, we have some excellent actors involved, all professionals, locals and imports. What about the story and action? Well, we've seen the futuristic vampire flick done before, but this is a very different take. I'm not sure I've ever seen a fully symbiotic, 100% sympathetic supporting role used for the obvious vampire cast. In that, this is also a nice change, where actively preying on a human is a unique aberration never before seen or at least reported. The interactions here are similarly varied depending on the type of character in the cast. A few more stock varieties present, but well presented on the whole with realistic responses given the unexpected threat. While there is some prejudice between some of the human and vampire char characters, it also has undertones of religious intolerance, not simply the racism or bigotry we've seen implied in other similar works. So the plot as a whole is serviceable with no real surprises beyond our general expectations. The action and blood aren't bad, it's definitely rated R for a reason, but don't expect any major choreographed action scenes or gunplay. The combat elements are there to drive the plot, but they shouldn't be the draw. In another film, that might be a weakness, but honestly, with the immersion factor of the world the filmmakers created, I wasn't really feeling let down. We're shown that the brothers have some superhuman abilities, but we're not expecting Matrix-level action or Blade-style fights. In part, this is because the plot and world building has told us that this behavior is unexpected and abnormal. There are distinct rules and expectations built over centuries of human and brother interaction that play into the film although that isn't enough to completely subvert the expectations of anyone who's watched many other movies previously. So on the whole, I think in this case the world building and characters work well enough to hold up to somewhat weaker plot and action elements, and this film was definitely worth a Netflix or Amazon rental at the minimum. When it comes to the DVD, I picked up the Dutch two-disc Region 2 Steelbook soon after it was released. I don't recall where I ordered it from, possibly Diabolic DVD, and I'm not sure it's available anywhere at this date, at least not from a quick search in English on Google. It's an excellent presentation that includes some making of featurettes and galleries. There's also a Dutch Blu-ray edition, Region B, that's been released, but I can't comment on it. Similarly, there are a couple US DVD releases, both as a single film and a collection DVD, which is probably the better bargain, but I haven't viewed either of those discs and can't comment on the quality. There don't appear to be any cuts in them from looking at DVDcompare.net, though. Audio and video should be the same quality, but they will be bare bones when it comes to features. On the whole, it's not a perfect film by any means, but steampunk is, if anything, more difficult to approach than cyberpunk, and a film that handles it well and originally is extremely rare. If nothing else, this movie's worth a watch for that alone. That said, as a vampire film, this is also a new take on an established horror genre, even if some of the police investigation tropes are a little more stereotyped, and I would definitely recommend it rental on the whole. 
As always, if you enjoyed the review, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I love comments, read all of them, respond to most of them. New reviews every Thursday, other videos when I have time. Stay tuned, movie fans. Lieutenant Fish, out.